Next tonight, it's 35 years since the East Midlands got its first commercial radio station with the launch of Radio Trent. But this month, Trent and two other stations have disappeared to be replaced by Capital FM East Midlands. Well, I've been talking to some familiar voices about shared memories and asking what's changed in the world of local radio. 1975, the Conservative Party gets a new leader, Forrest gets a new manager, and on the 3rd of July, Nottingham gets a new radio station. We've got the sounds, the sounds of this town, spread it around, sweet music, Trent is the place, 301 is the space. So what made Trent special to a generation of listeners? It was always summertime when Trent was on. It used to get you going, you felt alive. They just had that... You talk about the X Factor, well, they had the double X Factor. Who were the voices behind the Trent microphones? Kid Jensen! It's 23 minutes now before 1 o'clock on 301 Radio Trent. And why this month has the name disappeared forever? I feel like uh, that I've had a child and it's been savaged by a Rottweiler. We deserve to have our own radio station. Nobody has any right to come in and take it from us. 301, 301, sounds like a lot of fun. Play the sounds you want to hear. It's 301, it's 301 now. It's 301 that you want to hear. All you have to remember is just how new this combination of the latest pop music and local content sounded. Up until that summer of 1975, teenagers who wanted to listen to pop music, and I was one of them, had to hide under the bedclothes with Radio Luxembourg or Radio One. Now, there was a new sound in town. The sound that we, we offered right from day one was uh, an alternative to national radio, which people had been listening to if they wanted to hear pop music, for example, Radio Luxembourg by night or Radio One by day. I mean, we could play the same songs, but with a, a local angle. It was just everybody was new, fresh, enjoyed what they were doing, and you felt it. For John Peters and David Lloyd, a walk up Castlegate in Nottingham is a trip down memory lane. I think Trent was in there for about 30, 34 years, something like that. Yeah. It's a long time. I, I just remember walking down here before I ever worked here, when I, I grew up in Nottingham, wanting to work at the radio station, sitting in reception, <laughs> dreaming of working here one day. So this building <laughs> makes me feel strange when I walk in. And when you woke up, you were. <laughs> <laughs> Trent moved in 2007. The old studios have been stripped out, the buildings being converted into a state-of-the-art youth centre by Nottingham City Council. But for more than 25 years, this is where John Peters started most of his mornings. Good morning. And this is the studio where you did the first programme from? This is Studio A, yes. Our desk and all the panels here and uh, the news booth was in there, that's the window there for the news booth. And on the first day we had our chief engineer, Jeff Woodward, bless him, who uh, kept reminding me to uh, make sure you put yourself on air, he'd say. <laughs> a major rouse looming over a rate increase announced by Nottinghamshire County Council, and we'll be taking a look at the great Derbyshire custard debate. As material is transmitted, more has to be collected. To help in this process, Trent puts on the road highly sophisticated outside broadcast units. Fine, super. Well, that seems to be OK. Well, there's Tug over there. Let's go and have a word with him. What sort of response did you get from, from the people of Nottingham? Well, the phones went mad. <laughs> and they were saying, what's this? What's going on? But uh, that was very, very good. And within the first week, we had bags of mail, cards and letters, literally, uh, all saying how much they enjoyed it. And it was something different, of course, you know. If you were feeling a bit down, you put Radio Trent on, Radio Trent, boop, boop, and you were there. And that's what I liked about it. Trent launched some of the best-known voices in broadcasting, including Dale Winton, who was here for eight years. Kid Jensen was on, I remember him. 301 with the kind of sounds you want to hear. 
I was lucky because I had established myself as a name, I guess, after being on Luxembourg for seven years, which was a pretty big station in those days. And, um, and people were extremely friendly and uh, lived in Ruddington initially for the first uh, several months of when I was in Nottingham and then bought our first house in Radcliffe on Trent just off the A52 and found in, you know, a new set of friends. We had to make commercials, dummy commercials, for the radio sales team to go out and sell airtime because no one in Nottingham knew what a commercial was. Here we go for take two. Just make it a little warmer. You're a bit too hard at the moment. Would you like to play host of French school children this year? Families are needed in April, July and August. The production of commercials is a highly specialised and time-consuming business, requiring a good deal of expertise and dedication. We used to have lots of fun, as we did commercials with lots of well-known, famous people. By the time I arrived in the 80s, it was all happening. The station really had taken off because now there are 300 commercial radio stations back then. This was the 13th. There was nobody else locally. Radio 1 was on medium wave only. Everybody listened. The power of this station was amazing. At one stage, I think more than half of the people in the inner city actually listened to Radio Trent during a week. So you step outside, everybody knew you. You went into a news agency, they knew your voice. Incredible power back then. That's a but ten years after it launched, one of Trent's regular DJs hit the headlines for all the wrong reasons. March 29th, 1985, 24-year-old Lynn Goldengay has gone missing and it's front page news. Her former boyfriend, DJ Graham Neal, has appealed for her to get in contact. His colleagues at Radio Trent are full of sympathy. I remember the day the police came to pick him up. He was sitting in reception looking very morose. And I put my hand around his shoulder, I said, come on, Graham, she'll be all right, she'll turn up, you know, she'll come back. I saw him standing by the lift downstairs, uh, carrying a bag, looking ashen-faced, no shoes on, unusual sight. I went on air and I said that. I said, he's on tonight, I just, it looks a bit strange. I just described him clearing up what he'd just done. It was, it was a difficult time. Just after that, uh, the police came along and, of course, it's all documented as to what happened after that. Neil led police to Lynn's grave and was charged with her murder. Two months later, Lynn's boyfriend, Duncan McCracken, killed himself in a fume-filled car. And in June of the same year, Graham Neil hanged himself in Lincoln Prison while on remand. It was a big shock. It was like a thump in the stomach because you just couldn't believe um, that, that this would happen. People always say you know if you meet a murderer. and. We didn't. The East Midlands weather, apart from an isolated light wintry shower, most places will have a dry day with some... By the late 80s, commercial radio was thriving. And I think it's always there to Phil Dixon reporting. John Peters. Go on, let's shake a leg or two. Good morning. Or three. <laughs> Tell me about the ghost in this room, because I've heard stories about ghosts. And as we walked into this room just before, you said there's a little old lady in the corner. Oh yes. Are you um, serious? I'm serious. Uh, every morning when I used to walk through the door, I used to say good morning, because I used to sense there was a, uh, a little lady who was uh, there, over there. Yeah, over there. Uh, this used to be a women's hospital, apparently. This was the morgue. It was a powerhouse in, in the late 80s and was expanding with its medium wave service, GEM, its service in Leicester, Leicester Sound. So Trent was really at the beginning of consolidation. It kind of peaked at the end of the century and when we got into the 2000s, um, reality struck home. Advertising dried up to some extent. There are more and more stations fighting the same number of advertisers. This is the kid on goal playing the greatest hits of all time. And here comes another one from Elvis. Today, Kid Jensen broadcasts from Capital Gold, owned by the biggest radio group in Britain. And this month, Global launched Capital FM East Midlands. The name Trent, together with Ram FM and Leicester Sound, disappeared. What's really interesting this month is that you turn on your radio and four stations in the East Midlands have changed their names. I don't think that's ever happened in any area in the United Kingdom before. What Global want to do is give us what they see as the quality of national broadcasters, um, highly paid presenters, 
on local stations and complement that with local news. Whether they'll be able to actually achieve that or not is a different matter. Carol Fleming's students are preparing for a career in broadcast journalism at Nottingham Trent University. So as local radio shrinks, what does the future hold for them? We're going to lose the link that Trent has always had with Nottingham and that's very sad to lose. But there's still uh, an audience out there that wants something very local. Community stations are the obvious ones that will benefit. But there's also an opportunity for lots of online uh, news products to start up. Tonight, Nottingham Castle is the venue for an emotional reunion, a chance to celebrate 35 years, to share memories and to mourn what's gone. I'm quite astonished, actually, that uh, such a, a legendary name, one of the first group of commercial radio stations that actually ever existed, is, is being allowed just to disappear. It's a very sad time for radio. It's a very difficult time for radio. And I think it's the end of what we know as local radio now. It's like when somebody passes over, they're gone, aren't they? And at the end of the day, you can't bring them back, unfortunately. People will remember Radio Trent because there's thousands and thousands of listeners out there in listening land that will always remember Radio Trent. The staff that ever worked there will always remember Radio Trent. It won't be forgotten. The unmistakable sound of Radio Trent. Thanks for tuning in. See you next Monday.